Uh, what are your thoughts on this match? Are you are you um, are you favoring Mike in this matchup or? I favor Mike for sure. Um, Mike was able to win in a convincing 2-0 the first time. The cessation crystal and the damage output from his deck are just so powerful. Um, he's super, super aggressive. He can match Omnipoke's aggression in a lot of cases, which is not something that a lot of decks in the event can do. He can get like a Pokemon Center Lady loop going with Hunter Level X's Darkness Wing. Lots and lots of really powerful things that Mike can do. Uh, and, uh, and that put him to take the win the first time. So we will see if Omnipoke can get it back or if Mike Gibbs can cement his lead and uh, and come out as the reigning champion for Champions Cube Season 2. Yeah, I thought uh, this is... How big is the Cessation Crystal in this matchup? We saw it come up um, several times in previous games, and, it, and Mike's definitely going to be able to drop that down. I'm sure he's very excited to play that. <laughs> yeah, it, it's tremendous. It, it really defines the match. Especially because he has all that healing. Uh, that's definitely uh, a advantage for him, for sure. So he'll have to watch out for that. Um, it looks like now we should be good to go. So we are going to transition over into the game. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping for a good game. So let them know they're good to go. And then they should be off. Um, a lot of energy in Mike's hand. <laughs> Not a lot of Pokemon to evolve into. <laughs> Yeah, Mike's Pokemon. hand is uh, is atrocious. I mean, it there is there is just nothing at all. Oh, but Ani puts hand so great here. He's got the uh, the Winona. He's got he's gonna be able to um, use this call energy for her ball toy. It, it seems very good. Yeah, I could see this being a very fast game one, depending on what Mike's top deck is. Well, we saw how last game went with a, with a, um, you know against the Suicune deck. <laughs> it was over before it even started. <laughs> In the, in the round one, in the game one, but hopefully Absolutely. we get, you know, see, you know, these are, these are two of the best cube decks we've seen, so hopefully we get to see a good matchup here. Looks like maybe he's thinking about what he wants to grab. Using that call energy great card to start with it's going to allow him to get two basic pokemon from his deck and the only downside is that it ends your turn but when you're going first and you don't have an attack to use it's generally that's not a downside at all when you say yeah there i mean in, in a deck like this where you have really no colored energy requirements at all call energy is amazing it's uh you you get all the upside and no downside yeah, so I guess he's looking through his deck, making sure he knows what's prized. Very important part in cube. <laughs> you have to want to know if all your resources are available. Yeah, he he actually had the ball toy in hand already, so he can call energy here for the Star Raptor FB and the Skuntank G. Really just going to set him up nicely. He So Mike draws a Murkrow here. Um, it does have Astonish, which is nice. See a special Dark Energy come, come down, and I would imagine just a pass. Oh, that's not good. That's not what you want to see at all. <laughs> that's your yeah, Murkrow off the top. Not uh, not the time, Murkrow, unfortunately. No. All right, Omnipoke does got... get a... I was going to say, it would have been great if he would have been able to get into a, a Porygon, because he does have that Porygon 2 in hand. That'll allow him to draw up to 6, but sadly, nothing's really going on for him right now. Yeah, and, uh, and Omnipoke does just hit the basic dark off the top, so... Um... He's not going to be able to go for the Dragon Rush immediately, which means his best play is either going to be Claw Swipe or honestly just retreat into Star Raptor FB level X so he can uh, or retreat into the Star Raptor FB so he can level it up, get a fast call so that he can keep his hand alive. Because right now his hand is actually kind of dead. Right. Yeah, he doesn't have a lot of so he doesn't have a lot of ways to uh, accumulate cards now. So he is probably going to need to grab that Star Raptor uh, FB level X just to be able to keep moving. Right, he levels up into the Garchomp, attaches an energy. I can't see a better time to retreat into the Star Raptor right now. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, you get it all he right does bat. do that. You aren't even worried if he finds Lucario because you're resistant to fighting. So it's just a very good play all yeah. around. Yeah, and we we do just see level up into Star Raptor. Probably see a fast call here, and we do. He's searching his deck. 
So we're going to be able to find a supporter for the next turn. Mike, probably just hoping to draw anything. Uh, I, I think he would be happy with any cards that allow him to play the game, which he is really lacking. Yeah, and he already uses the uh, Poke Power, so he gets himself a Scott for next turn, which is just going to grab him any combination of three combinations of supporters or stadiums, which combos well with that Verbank City, allowing him to poison the active with Stunk Tank and apply a lot of pressure. What an item finder off the top uh, for Mike. Oh, that is not what he needs to see here. No, not at all. He's, he's not even anything he would be able to retrieve in the next few turns. So he's kind of just a sitting duck. He can't even really attack with Riolu either because of that fighting resistance on a Star Raptor. He does get an energy down to it just to make it so that Omnipoke has a slightly less obvious decision on what to Dragon Rush. Indeed. I, I mean, I guess... I guess if you're in this situation, that's about the best you can do. Well, you got to keep the energy moving somewhere. So I guess, you know, what else are you going to do? He's probably very excited to get rid of the Murkrow because Riot Honchkrow is a very threatening Pokemon to have in play. We do see the Verbing come down. He's going to use the Skunk Team G to poison the Riolu, which is going to be 30 damage counters on him between turns. Uh, which is pretty significant because if he gets when he gets the knockout on the Murkrow, if Mike can't do anything next turn, the Riolo is just gonna die when I mean, if Ani Hope push passes. So kind of just putting yeah, him in this check. Is, this is just a disaster for Mike. Do we see? Yeah, Dragon Rush the bench get the thirty on the active. I think this is gonna be a very fast game one. That's a Porygon off the top. That is not gonna result in a Mike Gibbs victory on this day. Oh man, I mean like. Oh, you do. You, you don't. I'm trying to think. Of line you retreat from the Porygon. I guess. I, <laughs> every option is bad. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Because you I mean you really need the Porygon for draw, but like you can't just sack the Riolu at this point. That was a. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Uh... So we see a draw for Omnipoke. It's it's kind of interesting. Uh, so I think his play here is... Oh, he goes Gladian. Okay. He might know for sure that he's got uh, a DCE in his prizes. He's got a fairy. I guess you could take out the Porygon with Stunk Tank. You mean Claw? Claw Slash? Yeah, yeah. I think that's probably his play here. Dragon Rush isn't even usable next turn because of its effect. And right. he doesn't have a good way to get into the other Garchomp and uh, and get out of that effect. So Mike actually just concedes they are going to go to game two. And we will see if we can get a better game out of them. Yeah, very unfortunate uh, turn of events. I'm sure that he would have loved to have seen something uh, a little bit better than what he got. But yeah, we will go into a fast game two here. Again, we got to appreciate Anuho keeping us on schedule as much as possible. <laughs> uh, yeah, he, he really has caught us up. And I mean, it's it's good for him as well, because it is almost 1130 in the UK right now. <laughs> so, Yes, he's, he's trying to basically I'm, I'm sure run. he'll be happy to go to bed sooner than later as well. Trying to speed run the Champions Cube, going for the roll record. <laughs> and uh, so this is actually a keep from Mike right away. Last time he did mulligan it back and he drew garbage. This time he keeps it, so we will almost certainly have a good game out of this. Okay, that is a much better hand. However, it is still kind of awkward. Yeah, you don't have any good discards um, in this hand. Besides, I mean, every card you want <laughs> to keep. Yeah, does does he have like a... See, I assume he has something that the Ultra Ball can find. I think he has a Shaman He has X. both Shaman EX and Jirachi EX. So he's fine in terms of yeah. getting cards. So on that front, he's okay. He he might choose to discard like a Dark Claw and a VS Seeker, I could see. Just because a Junk Arm can get the Dark Claw back if he has to. He definitely doesn't need two right now. He can attach one to the active and then evolve. Seems uh seems like it could be a good avenue. You think we do see an astonish uh, from from Mike here with the Murkrow? Uh he's choosing a random what did card. He hit? Um did he hit the wheat? Uh what I did didn't... he hit? I did not see, but Omnipoke does have a Winona in hand. Um, 
man, if you would have hit the Winona, I... that would have been insane. So on the flip side, this is now a terrible, terrible hand for Omnipoke. <laughs> oh, you're right. Oh. Um, Dana is completely dead in this matchup. I imagine we see Star Raptor FB and Level X, and he does go for that. That way, he's able to fast call him a couple of turns out of this. But man, he is he is not happy right now. Um, could we could we actually see this uh, this gun tank knocked out? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't know. If he's gonna be able to get off a riot um, fan attack only going to be doing up to well he can't level x never mind so i take that back so i don't know what his other options would be if he's not i think his best rock. option is like a shadow bind which would be uh he does have reverse okay so he could theoretically go special dark dark claw reverse valley shadow bind and that would get him there um be. i mean I but guess he... uh that's all he's got <laughs> to kill this gun tank <laughs> That would be reaching, but I mean, I guess, I don't know. I mean, he could do it. <laughs> I could... Mike Gibbs. I mean, under underneath everything, Mike Gibbs is an anime protagonist, and Destiny is on his side, okay? He's so the, He's got the plot armor. We could, we could definitely see that happen this finals. All right, so he does take the Garchomp into hand. Interesting that he doesn't bench it right away, and he attaches to the Skun Tank. I think he just wants to be able to retreat next turn into the Star Raptor so he can level up, get some supporter search. Top deck Junk Arm for the Item Finder for Mike is not great. I know, he's got Item Finder and Junk Arm in the same hand, which is just not great yeah, when you're trying to break it down for Ultra Ball. I imagine he's not too happy about this. So he does Ultra Ball, getting rid of the Claw and the Junk Arm. I imagine he... Shaman draws three, Jirachi gets a supporter, which could be significantly better. So we probably see the Jirachi EX here. I would assume. Um, because, yeah, Shaman isn't really going to draw him that many cards. So I want to save that. Yeah, he just doesn't have enough playable cards. I'm sure he would have loved to see like a Honchkrow or something, because then he uh, he could have gone for the Shaman, gotten four cards, felt mm. probably pretty good about his setup. But now... He he's essentially got all of his power cards in hand, but no consistency. There's the Jirachi. Yes, we do not. see the Jirachi. I, I would I would be interested to see if Mike goes for an N here. Just for a collector. Okay. Oh, and then the collector can find the shaman. Good good play. Good play from Mike. Yeah, Jirachi's for the collector, gets his board set up, benches the Murkrow. I imagine we probably see a Luke uh I would imagine we see a Porygon, actually. And we do see the yeah, Porygon. Okay. Porygon. And then perhaps the Shaman here? It has to be Shaman. There's there's no way it's anything else. Because otherwise, like, his his worst case scenario... Yeah, and there's a Shaman. Um, his worst case scenario would be, like, Item Finder for Ultra Ball. And then he could Ultra Ball for the Shaman. And I, I think he'd be pretty sad to do that. So, I think he... Oh, he is going to Item Finder here, yeah, though. He's going to grab the he wants to go. preemptively so he can... Uh... He wants to go hard. Dang. He decides not to attach the Dark Claw. I think I might have liked to see a Honchkrow level X go to the discard, but uh, too, he, he, he has no Pokemon him. recovery in his deck, actually. Oh, he doesn't? Oh. Yeah, so, so he doesn't have a lot of choice here, but he does get the Cessation Crystal. That is killer right oh. now because Omnipoke is setting up for that Star Raptor, and it's not going to do him any good. No, it's not. Oh my gosh, yeah, he's going to be like a sitting duck while Mike, set, while Mike sets up his deck. Hilariously, though, Mike's hand is totally dead right now. He he can Ultra Ball for a Porygon 2, and I think he's going to go for an Astonish. So he does go for an Astonish. Mike actually can't play the Cessation Crystal right now. Oh, because his hand is not great. Right, yeah. So next turn, he has to go Ultra Ball for Porygon 2 to be able to, you know, not have a dead hand. I didn't see what card he lost there. Um... I didn't either but it, it wasn't the most important one obviously the most i think he lost an energy oh uh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So right. he's gonna attach to gun tank go back into this star after fb level x no big surprises there i imagine he probably gets one of his many strong supporters off of fast call and then starts to play the game however mike having this cessation crystal so early is still gonna be huge did he actually just use smoke screen Yep, Skunk Tank actually does have an attack, so he's gonna... Wow, 
that's uh i mean i don't know if i agree with the play but i understand why he would do it i mean smokescreen can pressure he essentially says you know i'm gonna get the value out of the skunk tank while i can and uh so mike is gonna discard the porygon on the weavile so this is gonna be a really awkward game for mike i don't think he has any dark claws left uh his lucario can't turn into a dark type pokemon anymore because he only plays one one weavile and uh this is this is gonna be weird uh, neither player's deck really working right now we do see a cessation crystal on the bench with a haunch crow as well and then we're gonna see a backup Going for the damage yeah, the draws team. Mike some energy, which is what he's looking for the most. But uh, I think Mike is going for the really cheeky play of just spamming Astonish here until he can set up the other Honchkrow on his bench. I think you're right. It looks like what he's going for here. He is, um, he, that is exactly what he's doing. And that's probably the reason why Omnipoke did not bench the Garchomp C in earlier turns too, because it makes it harder for Mike to Astonish the Staraptor out of his hand. That is funny. That is a funny play to play around, but I mean, hey, oh God, <laughs> it's paying is... off. This is a set. <laughs> this is certainly a set. I mean, Castaway come down here. Um, you know, I guess Sporter, Tool Card, Basic Energy. So, um, I mean, I don't know what... Uh, has he gone through both Dark Claws? Yeah, he had to discard both Dark Claws very early on. And he's out of Junk, a junk Arm and Item Fighter, right? So. Right, yeah. So every single out to a Dark Claw in Mike's deck, I believe, is now gone. That, that's unfortunate. <laughs> He, he doesn't even have an eco arm, which I was really counting on Mike to at least have an eco arm. It's a very Mike Gibbs kind of card. Uh, unfortunately, we do not see that in this deck list. So, wow, wow he he actually is just going to go for the PCL and the fighting. I think his expert belt is probably prized. Yeah, uh, or actually, he might be choosing not to go for it just so he can draw more cards off of backup. Also, very viable. I guess he's figuring the swing is probably going to hit him, uh, so he's just going to like maybe heal it. Okay, and he hits the Dana with Astonish. Not really doing Mike a lot of good. Omnipoke probably feels the fire underneath him now, though, with the Cessation Crystal on the bench, so I have to imagine we see a retreat in the star after this turn. Yeah, he can't sit here forever, and then, you know, you're just gonna, he's just gonna, I said, well, you're not really putting pressure on me now that I can heal, so let me just, um, I'm just gonna keep plugging cards out of your hand, and maybe I'll hit the right ones. <laughs> Which, if he would have yeah, hit this, the uh, star after, that would, this would be a very different game. Uh, I don't. I didn't see a flip for smoke screen, so I'm just gonna double check. Oh, good call. We do know the card that he shuffled back, so it had. So okay, so we are all good. Draws a Lucario. Really, not what he's. I mean, these hands are like so hard to play down. Um, right. He did get that PCL last turn, so he can attach to the bench Honch Crow. He can play the PCL, get the Reverse Valley in play, maybe. Yeah. And uh, and then he can draw like two. Or do you just keep astonishing and just try to hit the uh, Star Raptor? He he's probably gonna astonish here because I mean Omnipoke's got three cards left. Yeah. I definitely question Omnipoke's decision not to go into the Star Raptor level X this turn, just because like the Cessation Crystal is sitting right there. Yeah, like you, you know that you are about to get like you know that you're about to have your stuff shut off. You already got two energies on the um, on uh, Honch Crow. and so. we we do actually see the retreat. Mike oh. is not even gonna gonna use the backup. He's probably just gonna level up and then start using Faint Attack. That would be a great way to get back some resources too. He plays Reverse Valley, which is actually. Uh, Oh, he, he chooses to level up here. I, I actually think not leveling up probably would have been better um, because it would allow him to level up out of the smoke screen. Right, and remove the effect of the attack. Yeah. yeah he, I don't um, but he does have Pokemon Center Lady, so we're probably going to see a faint attack onto the Garchomp C, if I had to guess. No, we, we see a faint attack onto the active, yeah. So I, I really would have liked to see a Shadow Bind. Omnipoke draws bull picks. That is uh, not getting there. His, uh... Or after. Yeah, question. if no response. So I, I imagine Mike used Shadow Bind here. He did. Yeah, because that's 30, 40, 50. Uh so so Omnipoke actually can't retreat and he actually just concedes. So this might be the fastest Champions Cube finals that well, it's certainly the fastest one so far that's ever happened, and it might be the fastest one ever to happen. So yeah, I mean, I'm surprised he didn't grab a supporter sooner to uh, help that situation he was in. 
Yeah, I think if he had more aggressively gone after the uh, the fast call, then it would have been a totally different game. But uh, I think I don't know why he decided not to even after Mike played the cessation crystal. But uh, here we are going into game three. That is a gentleman's mulligan from Omnipoke. Could see a really rough hand out of the second one. So, oh, and he has to keep it. Let's see what they both drew. Mike decided to keep his hand voluntarily, which means he has got something at least playable. Uh, just to anybody who is recently joining the stream, this cube does have a one of Gentleman's Mulligan. Omnipoke starting with Baltoy to Mike's Porygon. Not an ideal starter for either of them, for sure. However, could be worse things. It's Let's see. Crystal Murkrow down to Dark. Murkrow down, Special Dark pass, you know? Yep. If you're Mike Gibbs, that's pretty okay. Dual ball comes out for double heads. Very nice. And we'll see if the players can reveal their hands to us very soon so we can see what they're working with. Um, but, yeah, <laughs> we've seen him flip all sorts of things on dual ball. Double heads, double tails. Um, luckily this time, double heads. My hand here, I would say, is just okay. Mm -hmm. energy. It's, it's mm -hmm. not unplayable, which is a lot better than his first hand. Uh, Omnipoke's hand is awful. But he might actually. get bailed out with the end. <laughs> he he could get bailed out with the end. I Although, think when Mike sees no supporter, though, he's not going to play it. I was going to say you're right. You know, if he was, if he um, if he had a, like a maybe a a different supporter, he might be able to get uh, he might not might might be tempted to play the end. But I think seeing the fact that he's only you know playing dual ball and maybe touching DC, and be like, All right, I I'm on to you. <laughs> Yeah, dual ball, bench, bench, DCE pass. <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, you know, not the best. Plus, he also does have the underground expedition, so he can play a different supporter if he wanted to. Yeah, he, he's got other options. He doesn't have to worry about it too, too much. Although, if I was Mike, I would be slightly concerned about losing this Murkrow to a Dragon Rush next turn. I still don't think I'd play the end, just because, like, you know, doesn't exactly seem like Omnipoke's got the nuts. There's no way for him to get this ball toy out of the active. Uh, without attaching to it, so he he's got at least a turn. Yeah, unfortunately, Pokey Turn does not pick up non SP Pokemon, so Baltoy is kind of just sitting there until uh, he can retreat. Yep, we see attached to the Porygon. Uh, I actually think that uh, I don't think that Mike is gonna go for the. Oh, he does play the he end. He might end. save Omnipo from this hand. He's getting bailed out. Oh, he so saved him from this hand. Omnipoke's hand is drastically better now. Wow. <laughs> I mean, I guess... Oh, weird. man, Mike. When he's, if he watches the VOD of this match, then he is going to feel so upset. I guess he was feeling... Now, I will say, Omnipoke still does not have an energy in hand to get the ball toy out of the active. So if he does evolve into Claydol, it's just stuck. Right. Yeah, I'm sure he was not happy about starting ball toy in general, but... Yeah, and it's not like he had any choice either, just because, nope. you know, he uh, he mulliganed already, so he couldn't put it back again. Uh, we do see computer search for Porygon 2, Reverse Valley comes down, evolve into the Honchcrow, and I think we're going to see her back up for... Oh, the Enhanced Hammer! Oh, oh my gosh! that is incredible. <laughs> incredible draw for Mike. Oh my gosh, this is insanity. All right, this is the match that we came for. Not game one, not game two. <laughs> this is the match we came for. Oh my gosh. Holy cow, this is wild now. I, I have to imagine we see a retreat Hypnoblast this turn. Yeah, I mean, like, we're okay. also... Did he pass? Uh, yeah, yeah, we actually see a pass. I guess he decided he didn't want to endanger the Honchkrow, although putting the Baltoy on a two-turn clock seems pretty good to me, so uh, I, don't, I don't know, Mike. I'm side-eyeing you a little bit. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm curious. Cause I don't, I mean, like, the fact that Garchomp is going to be able to hit anything, well, not now with the DC being gone, but what are you worried about, right? He doesn't play Luxray. Yeah, exactly. So there's no attacker that's going to come out and really ru ruin your your plan here. And then the extra damage just puts a lot of pressure on the on the Pokemon. Plus now, like, this uh, ball, this Gladol would be, like, way more in range of something like uh, Darkness Wing from Garchomp level X. Or not Garchomp, uh, Honchkrow level X. Well, cosmic power, they're really not doing Joe any favors. I think his hand is significantly Ooh. less playable than it was before. Yeah. 
Luckily, if the Gator gets knocked out, he will be able to grab a Star Raptor level X with either Winona or Premier Ball. But you definitely do not want to have to resort to uh, mining. Uh, you definitely, you definitely don't want it to be that way. You're hoping you have at least some something else to do besides just that. Right, and if Mike plays a Cessation Crystal by then, then like, oh yeah, what he, happens? You know, and he's got a lot of uh, draw left. <laughs> yeah, I have to see a collector out from Mike this turn, and we do see that. Collector seems pretty good here. We saw this last game where he grabbed the, uh, you know, a lot of draw with it. <laughs> Yeah, gonna set up his board. This turn, he probably retreats that Porygon, levels up the Honchkrow, gets the the special Dark onto it, and then maybe he starts picking it uh, at Omnipoke's setup. Just because, you know, he, he can snipe at something with Faint Attack, and then in a later turn, he can use Darkness Wing to, uh, to get the knockout on the active. Yeah, what's funny is, I mean, he can't level up anything on his bench right now, because he needs these things exactly. to happen. Yeah, and I if if Mike hits the cessation crystal off this backup, I think it's just game over. Yeah, I mean, what 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 can what can Omnipoke do? All his poke powers will be shut off. Um, you have a full you'll have a setup a Honchkrow next turn that is basically just running through your board. Yeah, his hand is totally unplayable as well. Yeah, he doesn't. He has ways to at least accumulate some card. We don't have any energy in play. I think the enhanced hammer was a huge deal because you can't even get an attack off next turn. Tremendous. Yeah, it, it sets Omnipoke back hugely. I mean, he's only got three DCEs in deck now that he's played one. Okay, so we don't see a cessation crystal off the backup. Um, you know, nothing, nothing crazy there. That he's Mike's got a thirty-three card deck as the backup, so nothing crazy. Uh, level ball comes out. I don't know if Mike has any obvious hits here. Would you just save the level ball to grab Jirachi for Castaway? I actually would almost certainly grab Jirachi off of level ball and, and for, get it for Castaway. Because, you, you know, Castaway guaranteeing Station Crystal next turn. Right. But I um, it. Sure. I don't know. I feel like Station Crystal just bodies this deck, so why not just wait? It, it looked like he failed it. He did. He did fail it. So my guess is Jirachi is not in deck. He probably priced it. Unfortunate. Um, so he hits the Garchomp for 40, which is definitely what I was hoping for. Right. Um, he recognizes AD. that the Claydol goes down in a following turn without too much effort. Yeah, that Fan Attack's putting in work. Because he can't retreat the active, so he doesn't have a lot of options unless he gets the DC out of... Well, he can't attach, right? So he can't actually move this Claydol. Yeah. Cosmic Power for 4? I mean... <laughs> So does, we we can say that Joe is not drawing well, but there are no cards in his deck that make this like situation good for him. The, the attachment to Garchomp's interesting because you know he's gonna knock it out if he attack next turn, right? And the only way, but like I don't know, this seems like a bad situation. Yeah, you you don't like <laughs> Omnipoke says GG well played. Oh, is that gonna be it? <laughs> Where uh, where is the damage on Garchomp? He might have I'm just very scooped. Confused. I think he actually... I think he just conceded. I mean, I don't know what yeah, he said. Yeah, he said this game is uh, not going to get any better for me, I guess. Yep, so we see Mike Gibbs... Uh take the uh the win here <laughs> yeah we we see mike gibbs triumph in about 10 minutes <laughs> so, wow i mean <laughs> sometimes it just happens that, that way truly truly the pinnacle of uh of cube gameplay is yeah, so, uh ggs 10 minutes ahead. good job to both of them um i know that's probably not the game only Puck was hoping for but um honestly they had both really good decks um, Mike Gibbs ultimately coming out on top here with his uh Honchkrow Lucario deck. Very exciting. Fun fact: um, uh, our top three players were all in Pod three. So, uh, actually, shout out to Mike Gibbs for pointing that to our attention. So very cool. Um, very interesting a uh, game. Connor, you're the you. This is your cube. Um, and this is really your event. Do you have any thoughts about the event itself? Uh, anything you want to say? Thought the event ran really well. Um, you know, having all of the best players in the group come together and play your cube at once definitely gives you probably the best testing you can possibly get. So there'll definitely be changes to the cube happening after this. Um, 
But uh, overall, it was a ton of fun to watch, ton of fun to play. Um, really excited to see Mike win, actually, just given that, you know, um, we, we talked about this deck and then he executed it so, so well, and he was able to carry it all the way through to the win. Um, also, credit to Omnipoke, too. He um, he hadn't participated in the events in the group for a while. He actually hopped on to the last possible Cube League for the season, and he made top four, which qualified him for this event. And now he made it all the way to the grand finals. So uh, really impressive show, just given how late he got on to the, the track for this. Yeah, and I mean, uh, Mike, really cool. Mike always a strong finisher. So uh, not not a huge surprise to see him take a strong finish here, but uh, very happy to see him win.